What's good, y'all? I'm Jessica Stanley. And I'm Ash Phoenix. In summer 2021, we sold our stuff and started living full-time in our Coleman Rubicon trailer. We're traveling across the U.S. to get to know ourselves, each other, and the beautiful, complicated, messy country that bore us. Hit that subscribe and like button to join us as we find out what it really means to find our way home. What's good, y'all? We just wanted to do a quick update because a lot has changed in the last few months. Like, where do you even start? Literally. Well, yeah. we could start by saying that we now live in California. Do we live in California? Right. So that is actually the question. Yeah. Time. It's a hard thing because, like, technically, we live in North Carolina. That's true. So you have to have like a legal domicile if you're going to be like a tax paying American. <laughs> and North Carolina is a much cheaper place to have a domicile than California. So that is the main reason from my perspective to yeah. maintain a domicile in North Carolina. Yeah. But it does mean that we have to get the cars inspected in North Carolina. It means that we're registered to vote in North Carolina. All of that stuff is still happening there. So it's kind of a weird thing to be like disconnected from your domicile, but living someplace else. I never really thought about it before, but yeah. it is weird. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of other reasons and a lot of resources online for like how you would make the decision, why you would pick one state over another. Mm -hmm. We picked North Carolina because we're from there. Mm -hmm. I don't know that if we just randomly picked a state, it would have been North Carolina. There's a no, few there's... states that our viewers really recommend as yes. being the states you would pick if you have, if you're just like finding something on a map. Mm -hmm. And it's important yeah. to like, answer truthfully to all of the questions, things like car insurance people ask you, but other than that, like you can really, cause your car's registered in California. Yeah. yeah. It means that we pay taxes in two states. I know. Income taxes in two states. It's and so annoying. property taxes in two states. It's annoying, but like, I really feel like it is the cost of doing business it's... in the most free lifestyle I've ever experienced. Oh my, my whole God. Life. This, I'm, you know, no, I'm like, like it feels good. Yeah. So anyway. Domicile. <laughs> that was one of the funny things though, about like having a domicile in North Carolina is that the mail goes to the domicile yeah. in North Carolina, yeah. which means going to your mom, my mom. <laughs> and she is a very curious Scorpio Ooh. who will just, you know, she's be getting into the mail. She, she'll text and be like, oh, this thing has happened. And she's like, open the mail, looking through it. She's I'm paying like, bills what? for no. you? Oh, yeah. That's sweet. Well, that's a very generous. I'm yeah. grateful for that. But she's like, oh, this parking ticket was like $40. I just took care of it. Like, huh? That's so nice. No, it's really nice. Thanks, Jasmine's mom. Yes. But we did decide to pick up a lease in California, specifically El Sobrante. Mm -hmm. Because you had this new boo who lived in the Bay, and I had this friend who lived in the Bay. And we met them totally online, completely separate from one another. And they live 45 minutes away from each other. That was a weird calling thing yes. that happened. So then, crazier still, the day we got here, oh what happened? No. Okay, so my friend who lived in this house, he and his wife moved out of the house. So they, completely separate from us, found another house, like five minutes away, literally up the street. They decided to move into that house and they finished moving out of this house the day before we were supposed to get here. But they still paid the lease through the end of the month. So he was like, yeah, just come through, park, like you can be here through the holidays, no big deal. And we were like planning to move on to either, well, there was a lot of talk of what we're gonna do. We were maybe gonna break up and she was gonna- You don't know what I was gonna do? I don't do. know what you were gonna do. I don't know what you were gonna do. I knew that we were gonna need to figure out other next plans. Steps. <laughs> the next step. But after a certain point of us being parked here, it became really clear that we were like squatting mm -hmm. in, on the property. And the property really has, there's so much space here. Like, oh my gosh, you guys, the property has five different fruit trees in deep literally. maturation. I mean, the number of figs right now ready to just pop in your mouth in the back of our our house so anyway we were, yeah we were like well what's good with just picking up this lease because the thing about camping and we talk about this in our video about like things we didn't know about camping yeah. but the thing about it is that it's not free to camp places no. like you have to pay a rate every night to stay at a campground yeah. unless you boondock somewhere or park on i forget what it's called blm land we've not done it no. but i mean it's the sort of thing where like you're not gonna have full hookups like and full hookups is like water electricity yeah. sewer if you do that 
that. But if you are going to pay for a campground, there's gonna be some cost. And the cost could be as low as like under $20, depending on where you are. Not out here though. Not certainly not, not out here. And like, I mean, some places it could be like $150 a night. A night. So that, if you multiply it by 30 or 31 days in a month is a rent. And so we were like, if we want to explore the West Coast anyway, yeah. why not pay a place to dock our camper and then we can just go wherever we want on the West Coast. We can go to Canada, we can go to Mexico, we can go anywhere in California, yeah. Oregon, easily. It, and for you, like Hawaii is really Hawaii close. is like a stone's throw. Japan is another place I really want to go since we're out here. Like, there's just a lot that can happen easier. But and from this side of the we have high speed internet. Oh my god! You have a the bathtub. Day we got the Xfinity. Is the bathtub. <laughs> I mean, these are things that like, I was really taken for granted yeah. in the old life. Me too. Even now, like when we first got into the house, I was very apprehensive about getting furniture because oh, yeah. we made such a commitment to like minimizing our lives yeah. and not doing the most. But after a certain point, if you're going to live somewhere, you need to have furniture. And what's cool about having that community I talked about of people already here mm. who I was in love with is that people just gave us furniture that's really high quality. I mean, people weren't mm -hmm. giving us stuff they were throwing out. It was like, dang, I just need this amazing and beautiful piece to go to somebody who will love it. And that happened time and again. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good kickstart of just like, also just the universe, I feel like pouring out these messages of us being here. Should we show them the house? Yeah, let's get into it. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Here's your baby shower. Wait, what do you say if it's MTV Cooks? Oh, I don't know. Welcome to my crib. Don't yeah, yeah. Welcome yeah. oh, yeah. to our crib. Come on in. Okay, I think this is great. I like your instincts. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite rooms by far. This mm -hmm. is where Justin and I practice yoga. This is where we shoot yoga classes. Mm -hmm. This is where we sometimes smoke weed together and cry. Mm -hmm. This is where a lot of emotions happen. And this whole window is such a huge part of it. I love this room so much. Um, it's weird and long, but it works perfectly for what we need it for. And then the other thing I love about this room is that Jessamine sometimes paints beautiful pictures. So mm -hmm. this is a great place for me to get to put them up on the wall. That makes me happy. You ready for the next room? Yeah, All right. This is obviously my bedroom because while I have a deep commitment to making the bed, but when I get out of it every time, I've had wonky sleep and I didn't make the bed. So this is my unmade bed. This is my unfolded clothing basket of laundry. That's how you know this shit is real. But this, the, what's on top is from a shoot that we did yesterday. Yeah, but it's all like, unfolded clothes. Yeah. I don't need to take now. There's also some yoga props over here in the yoga corner. This is kind of, it becomes a catch-all sometimes, yeah. but it's also my space. I love mm, it. Okay. All right. This bathroom is so big. Yeah. Uh, this bathtub is so good. Yes. I would say not unlike my unmade bed, I haven't like scrubbed the tub in like a minute. Uh -huh. I just <laughs> shoot the other day and yeah. I was noticing how Oh, <laughs> that's my, th I didn't even notice that until just now. But like if I was giving a house tour, like I was trying to sell this house to somebody, I would just talk about how much marble there is. Oh yeah. You would think it's cold, but we're in North Northern Northern California. It's just not all that cold mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, I've been really excited to take better care of myself in that bathroom. I also love this storage I really enjoy and I'm just gonna throw this, this out here. here even though like we have really downsized pretty dramatically I think in terms of stuff and so there's not just like I love how unfull it is me too that's what I enjoy about it <laughs> I'm like there's just all this storage space it's just not full of random shit we don't need next we, we don't I would say this is the room I think we use the least Technically. Yeah, definitely. Um, but this is a TV room. I love it. It's hard that it's so sparse for me sometimes because I love a lot of art and stuff like that. But I do like how sort of meditative it can be mm -hmm. and feel. This is where we sit down to watch hilarious shows, usually during or right after dinner. All right, here we go down, down the hall. So this is where I do most of my work. Mm -hmm and do some spinning around in circles. Uh -huh. This is my desk. And this is my new red guitar that I love. I'll pick it up. I feel like red guitars deserve green capos. That's why. Oh, I see. I don't know that's what that's called. You have to go and eat. Yeah, let's, let's show what's behind what's door number. It's it's a secret. All right, behind door number whatever number. We haven't talked about this at all. Door number seven. What's happening? Kitty City. Kittens? Surprise! Surprise! Hello, Ruby. This is Ru and her six kittens. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so random. We talk about this at all, baby. Out loud. Oh my god. 
It's deeply lesbian. And we really do hide it's, them away in here so people don't judge us. But is that why? No, come on, kid. That's what you do. This is the love of my life. Oh. Sorry, Justin. I'm just telling you now. But his name's Phil. The cat's names are Phil, Lil, Tommy, Chucky, Susie, and Angelica. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you picked up on that reference, but it's from the reference. This is my little front man, and I love him. And we're gonna run away and get married. Sorry okay, if you hate did, it. How did this come to pass? Because we were living on an RV, which is not ideal for cats. Not cat friendly. We did not have cats. How did this come to pass? So my friend texted me one day after you and I had discussed how much we love cats and we're missing a cat friend. We weren't gonna do anything about it, but yeah. she hit me up and said, there's this really beautiful stray cat who's a love. In my head, I was like, that bitch is pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, but people in my life were this like, bitch. no, no, she's not. And I was like, mm, tell me she is, but that's okay. She was just acting like a pregnant cat, you know? So then I would say 12 weeks ago, she made all these little mofos and I fell in love with them. And they still are here, but they're up for adoption. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're ready to find you if you're ready to find them. Yes, and they're all so sweet. They're perfect. Everything they're all perfect. house broken. Exceptional health. Yeah. Yes, this is uh, they all the pickles. cameras. Angelica yeah. Pickles. So this room though was ideal for the cats because it is like a studio apartment in and of itself. So like it has a separate entrance here. And then in here, there's like a studio, an efficiency kitchen, kitchenette with a bathroom back here. All right, next up we have this really beautiful kitchen space. I don't- Really the kitchen I've is- I've never spent enough time here. Literally. Um, what? Yeah, I really, I love the space so much. It's so big, it's so open, it's optimized for, for uh, communal eating, yes. for, uh, for family time, yes, for family yeah, yeah. productions, literally, find out. yes. Um, so this space, we've we've had people set up craft services here. We've mm -hmm. had big lunches for crew and stuff come through here. Mm -hmm. It's just been really incredible. I feel like our training on the trailer has really oh helped God, so much baby. keep all of this exactly how we want it, which is minimal and not you know not impulsive buying and things like that. So yes. it stayed really clean energetically, and I'm just I love every minute of it. All right, let's go in here. It's a mystery room. Mm -hmm. Not really, but there's not a lot of light. So this is the garage. We got our paddle boards yes. ready to go, ready to hit the water. Literally. We've got storage over here. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just clear. Mm -hmm. And I love Literally. Just, ha just leaving room for anything. The potential mm -hmm. is limitless when you leave room for it. So this is our garage and I love our garage. And I've always wanted a garage. This is my truck. Mm -hmm. It's my first time ever buying a car from a dealership. First time buying a car with financing. It is one of my most favorite things that I've ever procured. I never thought of myself as someone who would drive a big white truck, but as soon as it was within sight, literally everyone has said that I'm the type of person who would drive a big white truck, which is oh, yeah. interesting to me. I didn't know that. In the same way that like, I never thought of having a little chihuahua dog <laughs> and everyone's like you're the type of person who has a chihuahua <laughs> show us around then uh yeah i mean i don't really know i don't know that much about cars so it what i say is going to be very rudimentary but it has huge tires you have to like jump into it in a lot of ways which i really enjoy it makes me feel very like husky sturdy yeah but it's dope it can tow the trailer this is a persimmon thing this is an orange tree. This is the chicken coop. Our friends who lived here before had a bunch of chickens. They still have the chickens, but they had a bunch of chickens in here. They had the whole run too. And we sometimes bring the cats out here. So it's like a cat run, cat coop. But this is the hot tub. Um, this is a very recent addition acquisition. I need to be in water regularly. And we, this was something that was actually like a factor in going on the road, just being closer to water and like being able to touch it regularly. These guys are getting ready. What I love about having a lemon tree on site is that you never get to see how wonky lemons actually grow. But they grow like they're crazy people. I mean, it's just like, they'll do, this looks like a chili pepper, it's a lemon. You wanna go see the trailer? Yeah. I still live in the trailer full time. 
we don't use the kitchen stuff that much, but everything, it's really dope to just have like a, a bedroom suite for us mm -hmm. here. And I love that we can be parked here and have a beautiful view just like you would at a campground mm -hmm. or just like living out on the road, but in the backyard. We both live in the camper still, mm -hmm. but I sleep in the camper most nights. And, and I sleep in a camper some nights. I understand the need for us to have space from one another. And I definitely wake up earlier whenever I'm not in bed with you. Mm -hmm. And I like am more efficient with my time, I think. And we fight less when we sleep apart. And I think that was the whole impetus. Just like change different things around to see how to optimize our living together because being life partners doesn't necessarily mean that you're creative collaborators yes. and it doesn't necessarily mean that you own businesses together and yes. it doesn't necessarily mean that you cohabitate. Yes. But trying literally everything all the time, which is both of our style, sometimes requires a little bit of adjustment. And so this is the little bit of adjustment that we're working with now. And it's working really well today and tomorrow we might choose something else and I love the freedom to be able to do that. I think the energy of the camper really carries over mm -hmm. into that to say like, what is your freest form of pose, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like seeking that freedom is what living on the RV is all about. Mm -hmm. Even when the configuration of seeking that freedom looks like maybe you don't live on an RV, mm -hmm. you still do. Right. We very much, it's in all the different things that we do, yeah. how much we still live in an RV. Thanks so much. That's our house and truck yes. and kind of like our life right now. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you'll be first to know the next time we post. And... Tell us a secret. I feel like we just told a bunch of like yeah. messy drama shit totally. about our lives. Tell us some of your tea. Like I know y'all got shit going on. And uh, yeah, it's been cool kicking it with you. Catch you See later. See you next time.